To factor complex trinomials, a reminder, trinomials means three terms, um, you recognize it because the leading coefficient is not one. Right away you say, uh-oh, this is going to be more difficult. Well, this is close to the top level of difficulty. What you have to realize is that there may be one or more ways of breaking up that first term. When we did complex uh, simple trinomials, it broke up as, let's say, A and A. Well, now we're going to have to break it up as probably 3A and A. And over here, it might break up as 4C and 1C. So uh, it also might break up as 2C and 2Cs. It makes it a little more difficult. So I have a procedure here. It's called the guess check or cross check method. And it requires you to look at the factors of the first and last terms and check their, the products of their factors to see how we can obtain the middle number. So the process that I'm always saying is, take the factors of the first number, forwards and backwards. Okay, one times three, or three times one. Then take the factors of the last term. Now, you don't have to do it backwards because that would be redundant. It would check the factors in both, uh, in all the possibilities, by just reversing one of the sets on either side. So, again, one times six, or two times three, makes a six. Now, I put an X through the center, that's my cross, okay, where I'm going to do my checking. Now, I'm going to be taking a look at products as we go across, and I'm looking for a pair whose factors, okay, the products, I should say, are going to add to give 11. So, let's take a look through these. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 1, no, that's not going to be 11. And then 3 times, so um, this one, it won't work with the 1, 6. 3 times 3 is 9, and 1 times 2 is 2. 9 plus 2, hey, that is 11. Now, if that didn't work, I would have to go on to the next pair. Thank goodness I don't have to go further with this. So that's going to be 9 plus 2 is going to give me the 11. Now, what do I do with these values? I'm going to take these and put them into brackets. The first line is the first bracket. And the second line is the second bracket. Now I'm going to write the 1 in here. I don't really have to. You'll see why later. And then you start filling in the details. Well, the first term has to give me 3 times 1 has to give me 3a squared. So each of these guys is going to have an a on it. And the last pair, 2 times 3, gives me the 6. Well, that one's fine. But now I have to look at the signs that go on these things. Now you probably can predict it, but let's just make sure you know the questions along the way. It's similar to the way we did it for simple trinomials. You say, looking at this sign, says that the two signs have to be the same, and they're both going to be pluses. Or the larger one is going to be plus, and so the other one would also be plus. Now, what are we talking about? What we're really talking about is the sign on the factors that we would get when we would multiply these together. So there's my 2a and 9a that gives me the 11a. And it says both signs are the same, and they're both positives. Just like before, when you have a minus sign of the last term, it makes it a little more complicated. So we'll take a look at this. It's a little more complicated. This sign here will take care of itself. I can write down the factors of 4. 1 and 4, 2 and 2, 4 and 1. You only have to put it backwards on one side, and in fact, sometimes it's better for the one with fewer factors to put it backwards on that side. However, I've already started, so I'm going to continue. My question, before you start multiplying, make sure you know what your question is going to be. I need factors that are going to subtract to give 8. So I start. 4 times 5 is 20. 20, 1 times 1 is 1. Is 20 minus 1 going to give me 8? No. 2 times 5 is 10. There, that's good. And 2 times 1 is 2. 10 minus 2. 10 and 2. Subtract to give 8. So here are the pairs that I'm going to be using for my brackets. The first bracket is going to be 2 and 1. The second bracket is going to be 2 and 5. Fill in the details. C and C. And now we have to check out the signs. This says the signs are going to be different. And the larger product is going to be negative. Now, when I say the larger product, don't say, oh, 5 is the larger. You have to look at the larger product. So you look at the product of 1 and 2c for the inside is 2c. 
and the product of the outside, and that's going to be 10C. Larger product is, in fact, 10C, okay, and that's connected with that. So the larger product has to be negative. So the second number here in my list, second bracket. And the signs are different, so this is going to be the plus. Now remember, you can always check these out by doing FOIL. But I've got the OI of FOIL on the inside already done. That would be a negative. Both of these guys would be positives okay, when you're working them out. And you just double check that the first two multiply to give that, the last two multiply to give that, especially paying attention to signs.